In this video, we're going to learn how to set up logging with the Fast API framework in Python. And we're going to see how to set up middleware in order to log out details of every single request and response that comes into your application. And we'll also see how to ship those logs to BetterStack's platform in order to analyze and search the logs and find important events that are occurring in our application. Let's get started. Now let's start by creating a Python virtual environment and installing FastAPI into that environment. I have the documentation open at the moment and we'll leave a link to this below the video. What we're gonna do is go to the install FastAPI section and we're going to run this command here, pip install FastAPI all. Now I'm gonna cross over to VS Code where I have a directory with a main.py file. That's all that's in that folder. And what we're gonna do to start with on the terminal is create a Python virtual environment using the venv module. So python m venv and let's give this environment a name of venv fast api. Once we've run that command you need to activate the virtual environment. I'm on Windows at the moment so what I'm going to do is activate it with this command and you can see that that is activated now. If you're on a Unix system you can use the source command in order to do that. What we can then do is install fast api and actually I'm going to just paste that command that I copied from the documentation and that's going to install Fast API as well as other dependencies such as Uvicorn. And Uvicorn is the async ready web server that we're going to use to serve the Fast API application. Once that's done, what we can do is we can actually create a small Fast API application and we'll build some logging into that application, including building a middleware slightly later in the video. So to start with, let's import from Fast API the Fast API object. And in order to create a Fast API application, the most simple thing you can do is instantiate that and store it in a variable which we will call app. And then using this app object, we can define handlers and endpoints in the Fast API application. So I'm going to define an endpoint that takes a get request. And the path for that is just going to be a slash. So it's the base path in the application. And then what we can do is we can define an async Python function and this is the handler for the root. So let's call this function index and then we can return a bit of content. And I'm, in my case, I'm going to return a dictionary here and we'll give it a message of hello. So a very simple endpoint here. It returns a Python dictionary containing a key message and we can type in that return type if we want using this syntax here and tell the FastAPI function that this is going to return a dictionary and FastAPI will then convert that to JSON. Now what I'm going to do is replicate this endpoint. We're going to create one more endpoint and this one is going to be to a URL that we're going to give a path of upload videos. And I'm also going to name the function upload videos and we can change the message here to video uploaded. And later on in the video, we're going to introduce a bit of latency for this function to simulate a long running request that you might get, for example, when you upload a video. So now we have two handlers. Let's import Uvicorn at the top. And remember I said that was the web server that we're going to use and at the bottom, we're going to run the web server here. We're going to check if we're running this file as a Python command, and then we're going to call the uvicorn.run function if that's the case. And we pass our app object into that function, as well as some details here for the host and the port. And you can change those if you need to. Now what I'm going to do in order to run this is make the terminal a little bit bigger here, and we're going to run the uvicorn main app command. And I'm going to pass the dash dash reload flag to this so that the server will reload when any changes are made to the code. So we now have a server running on localhost 8000. If you go to the browser, you can see that at the main endpoint here, we get the response of message hello. And we can add the other endpoint here of upload dash videos. And we're going to get back that different message for the second endpoint. So we have a fast API application, albeit very basic, but how do we add logging to this application? Let's go back to VS Code and we're going to create a new file in the project that's going to be called logger.py. And we're going to define some utilities from Python's logging module in this particular file. So at the top, I'm going to bring a couple of imports in. We're going to import the logging module and also the sys module from Python. And then what we're going to do below that is get the root logger. So I'm going to get that logger by calling a function in the logging module. And that's going to give us back an instance of a logger in Python. So what we're going to call is logging.getLogger. And this function can optionally take a name. It can be a string or none. And that's going to return a logger with the specified name and create it if necessary. And if you don't specify a name, as it says here, it's going to return the root logger. 
So this line of code is going to give us back a logger instance in Python. What we're going to do after that is we're going to create what's called a formatter. And a formatter in the Python logging package is going to determine the output format of your log records. So let's create a variable here called formatter, and that's going to be equal to an instance of a logging.formatter object. Now this takes some arguments. The most important one is the format. So let's pass in a format string here, and we're going to set that equal to a string that will determine the output format of our logs. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the documentation for the logging package in Python. And what we're going to look at is on the left hand side here, it's the log record attributes. So a log record basically represents a piece of log output and this log output can have some attributes that are predefined in the logging module. So if we scroll down here, you can see some of these attributes that we can reference in our log format. For example, this one here is for a human readable time when the log record was created. And we also have other ones such as the level name and level number. And the level name in the logging package refers to the debug, info, warning, error or critical log level. And each of these have a corresponding number that determines the severity. And the higher the number, the more severe the log event is. And we'll leave a link to this below the video. There are many of these log attributes. But what we're going to also reference is the message. And that's the output message that's passed into the log level method. So let's go back to VS Code and we're going to create a log format here. So the first thing we're going to output is the time at which the log record was created. And then we're going to put a space and a dash. And actually I'm going to move this to a new line so we can see the entire line better. And after the dash, we're going to put the level name, which could be info or error or any other log level that's defined in your application. And then I'm just going to put another dash here and we're going to output the message. That's the actual message passed into the log method, as we're going to see very soon. So this is a very simple format for our log records. What we're now going to do is create some handlers that are going to determine where the log re records are going to be shipped to. So let's create a couple of these. The first one's going to be called stream handler, and that's going to be a logging.streamhandler. And this can take any stream as a parameter, but if you don't specify one, it's going to send the output to standard error. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to pass in standard out using the sys.standardout property and that's going to send the log for the stream handler to standard output. Now we can define another handler here, which I'm going to call file handler, and that's going to be a logging.file handler instance. And the main argument we need to provide here is a file name. So let's provide a file name of app.log. Once we've done that, we can set the formatter. So basically we're going to take each of the handlers, like the stream handler, and we're going to call a method on that called set formatter and we can pass in the formatter object that we created on line 8. And I'm going to do that for both of these handlers, so we're also going to do it for the file handler. And we're nearly done. What we need to do now is we need to add the handlers to the logger instance. So we have the logger that we created at the top here using the getLogger function. What we're going to do is we're going to set the handlers property on the logger, and we're going to set that to a list of all of the handlers that we want to use in this application. So I'm going to use the stream handler, and also the file handle. And the handlers property is telling the logger where to send the output records. So it's going to send them to standard output and also to the file that we specified for this file handler. And the final thing I want to do is set the log level. We can do that on the logger by calling its set level method. And the level that we want to set is logging.info. So we now have the configuration for this logger and we've set some formatters and handlers on the logger. What we can do now is go back to main.py and at the top here, what I'm going to do is import from logger the logger object that we created in that package. And we can use that logger just below the application. So for example, I can call logger.info and we can then pass a message into that. The message I'm going to pass is starting API. Now what we can do is make the terminal a bit bigger at the bottom. And if I save this file, it's going to reload the application. And it says starting API. That was the message we passed in. And it's got the format that we specified. We've got the time at which the log record was created. Then we have the log level and then we have the message. So we now have a logger that we can use in the FastAPI application, and we can also add log statements to our handler functions in FastAPI. So let's go to the index function, and I'm going to put a very simple log message in here. And again, we're going to call the logger.info function, and the message I'm going to pass is simple. It's just request to the index page. 
and we can add a very similar message to the upload videos page for now, request to the video upload page. Now we'll add some slightly more interesting code in a second, but let's test this out. If we go back to the browser here and go to our upload videos endpoint, if I refresh this page and go back to the terminal on VS Code, you can see we get this output log here containing the time, the log level, and also that particular message that we passed into the function. So we have some very basic logging going on here. We've got a module in our application called logger.py where we define the basic setup. And then we have in the main.py the ability to import that logger and use that logger. So we use it here and we also use it in our handler functions as well. Now soon we're gonna add a middleware to log output for every request. But what we're gonna do before that is we're going to add a handler that allows us to ship our logs to better stack. And this is vital for centralizing your logs across different services in a single place where you can then search through them and build some analytics around those logs and also helps with identifying events or anomalies that are occurring in your application. So what we're gonna do now is go to the Better Stack log page and we're going to create a source that allows us to take the logs from a particular service. So let's connect a source now and we're going to give it a name here and let's give it a name of Fast API Demo and we're going to select a platform and we can search through the list available here and we're going to select Python. So let's create that source and then we're going to get back a token as you can see here. Let's copy that token and what I'm going to do is go to logger.py and right at the top of this module I'm going to add the token here. So let's create a variable called token and we're going to set that equal to the string that we get back. Now in a real application you should extract that token to the environment and then read that in securely and of course that should not be put on GitHub or any other source control system. But we're just going to leave this here for demonstration purposes in this video but make sure you don't hard code these types of tokens in your applications. So what we have now is a source and we can now ship our logs to this source using the token that we've been given. And in order to do that, we need to bring a new package from BetterStack into our application. So I'm gonna to go to the BetterStack documentation for logging in a Python application. There'll be a link to this just below the video. What we're gonna to do to start with is copy the pip install command and we're going to install the logtail Python package. And this is basically a package that allows you to ship your logs to BetterStack. So let's copy that command and go back to VS Code. I'm gonna stop the FastAPI server and we're gonna paste that command in and install the Logtail Python package. Once we've got that installed, we can then use that package in our application. I'm gonna go back to the documentation and you can find the instructions on how to use this with a Python app in this documentation. So what we're gonna do is import the Logtail handler. So this package gives us the Logtail handler that we can use to ship logs to better stack. So let's import that at the top. And we're then going to take the logtail handler and we're going to go to the section that we have here where we created two handlers and we're going to create another one just below this and this is going to be called the better stack handler. Now we're going to set that equal to an instance of the logtail handler and what we need to pass in here is a source token and we need to set that equal to the token that we got from the better stack user interface when we created that source. And of course we saved that token at the top of this file on line five. So we're gonna reference that token here in the argument. And once we've created this better stack handler, what we can then do is go down to the logger.handlers line, and we're gonna add our new better stack handler to that list. So now we have three handlers in the application. And of course you can add and remove these as you wish. You don't need to use all of them. If you don't need to log to a file, you can just remove that handler but I'm just gonna keep logging to all three of these. And what I didn't show earlier on was actually the app.log file. You can see the logs that are being collected in this app.log file, and this corresponds to the file handler that we defined here, where we told the file handler we we're gonna send those logs to the app.log file. So we have that on the left-hand side. Our logs are going to standard output, they're going to the file, and now, hopefully, they're going to go to our better stack source via this logtail handler. So let's run the application again on the terminal. And once that's running, what we're gonna do is go back to this page here for upload videos, and we're gonna refresh the page. And we can do the same at the other endpoint where we just get back the message of hello. If we go back to the better stack platform here, and we go to the live tail for the logs, we should now see that we are actually getting these logs coming back to the better stack platform. And we can click these logs to get more information about them. So for example, we get the file name that emitted that log. We get the message and these contain very basic messages at the moment and we also get some information about the level and severity as well. Now you can add your own key value pairs to the Python log output and we're going to see an example of that very soon. What we're going to do now is we're going to create 
a middleware in our Fast API application that's going to log details of every request that's coming into the application. Now let's start by going to the Fast API middleware page. So a middleware is a function that works with every request before it's processed by a specific path operation, which is basically a handler function. And this function also can process every response before it returns it to the client. And the benefit of that, if we go back to VS Code and look at the code that we have in main.py, if we look at the two handler functions, we have two outputs here to logger.info. Now imagine that contained the same data and we had it in 50 different endpoints. We might want to consolidate that and instead of adding log calls in every single handler, if we have a common functionality there, we can extract that to a middleware that's going to run before every request. So how do you define a middleware in a fast API application? Let's go back to the middleware page. And as we've seen, we have an app object when we instantiate fast API. We can also use another decorator here, the app.middleware decorator. So I'm going to copy that decorator and we're going to go back to main.py and I'm going to define this middleware just above the handlers. And later on, we're going to extract that middleware to its own file. So we use the app.middleware decorator and then I'm going to define another async function and let's call this one log middleware. Now a middleware in fast API, it can take two arguments. First of all, the request object that is passed in as the first argument. And then we have a function passed in as the second argument called call next. So let me just copy these and we're going to bring them into the code here. And we need to import the request object from fast API. So let's do that at the top. Now what I'm going to do within the middleware function is I'm going to create a Python dictionary that we're going to call log dictionary and that's going to be equal to a dictionary with two keys. And the first key that we want to add is for the URL. We can get the URL for this request by using the request.url property. That gives us back a URL object that contains another property called path and that will give us the full path for that request. And we can also add a second property to the dictionary and that's going to be the request.method and that's going to tell us what kind of method that was sent to the back end. Was it a get request, a post request or so on? So our middleware now has a dictionary containing a URL and a method. What we can do is we can call logger.info here and I'm going to pass the log dictionary through to that. And what that's going to do is it's going to output that log dictionary as the message for this logger.info call. And because we're using this as a middleware, this is going to be run on every single request that comes into the Fast API application. Now we need to then progress the middleware onto the next middleware in the chain or to the actual handler function if it's the last middleware. So what we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to create a variable called response. And we're going to call this function here that was passed in as a second argument. It was called call next. We can call that and pass the request into that. Now, because we're in an async function here, we can await that function returning. And what this is going to do is it's going to return the actual response that's to be sent to the client. And at this stage, we can modify that response. For example, we could add an HTTP header that we want to send back. But all we want to do is just log out this data. So what I'm going to do for now is just return the response to the client. So this is a middleware that does some operations on the request coming into the client and it logs out some data and then it simply returns the response. We're going to see later on that we're going to add another property to this log dictionary that can only be calculated when we've generated the response for the client. So we are going to modify the code in between generating that response and returning it a bit later in the video. So let's now test this out. I'm going to remove these log calls that we have in the function. We don't need those anymore and we're just going to see the log output for this middleware here. So let's save the file and go back to our page here. I'm going to refresh this page and we get back the same response. But what we need to know is has the middleware run in the application. So let's go back to better stack and you can see this log record at the bottom here. If I expand that, you can see we get back the message containing those two properties that we added to the dictionary. So the URL, which is just slash and the method, which in this case is get. And we can test that for the other endpoint. So slash upload videos. If we do that, and go back to the live tail. This time at the bottom, you can see we get back the message here containing a different URL. It's still a get request, but the URL has changed to slash upload videos. So the log output generated by the middleware is now being sent to BetterStack. What we're going to do now is show how to consolidate the middleware in its own module. So what I'm going to do is cut this out of main.py and we're going to create a new file here called middleware.py. And I'm going to paste the function in here. And then we're going to remove the decorator because we haven't imported the app. 
and we can't do that, which we'll show in a second, because it will result in a circular dependency. Now I need a couple of imports at the top here. We need the request object from FastAPI, which we're using as a type hint. And we also need the logger object from the logging module, which we're also using in order to call methods like logger.info. So we now have an async function called log middleware, and it lives in its own module, the middleware.py module. So now that we've defined this module, let's go back to main.py, and we don't need to import the request object. And we need to now add this middleware to our app that we have here on line five. And we're not using that decorator anymore. How do we register the middleware? Well, it turns out the app object has a function called add middleware. So we can use that function, but the problem that we have here is that that expects a middleware class. And what we have in middleware.py is a function called log middleware. So let's go back to main.py and to start with, let's import from middleware that function that we defined called log middleware. And now we need to add it to the app object, but as I said, it needs a class. So what I'm gonna do is go to this documentation or rather this issue that was raised on the FastAPI GitHub page. And the issue question here is how can you get access to the app object in a different file from main.py? Now, if we scroll down, we can get the answer to this. And this answer is very relevant to us. It's about adding a middleware that's defined in another module of the application. What we can do is we can use the base HTTP middleware class from starlet.middleware. So let's bring that import in at the top here. We're gonna go back to main.py and just underneath our middleware import, let's import the base HTTP middleware. Now, FastAPI basically runs on top of a framework called Starlet. And this is an async framework for developing web applications. And this base HTTP middleware, we can go to the documentation for that. So let's cross over to the Starlet documentation. And what you need to do in order to implement a middleware class that uses this as its base class is you must override the function called dispatch. And you can see that in the signature below, we have a class that inherits from the base HTTP middleware and it defines a function called dispatch. And then within the dispatch function, it defines the code for the actual middleware. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow the guide on this GitHub issue. We're going to pass the base HTTP middleware into the app.addMiddleware function, and then we can pass a dispatch method. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it equal to that method that we defined in the middleware.py file, and that's the log middleware method. So let's go back to main.py and to the add middleware call on the app, we're gonna pass the base HTTP middleware from Starlet, and then we're gonna pass a dispatch function that's equal to log middleware. And at the bottom, we're getting this error that we cannot import base HTTP middleware. Now we can go back to Starlet here and see what's wrong. I've copied that import from this issue on GitHub that was raised in 2019. I believe the module has changed. That is now starlet.middleware.base. So we're gonna copy dot base and we're gonna add that into the path at the top here. And if we save that and reload the server, you can see it's now starting up with no issues. So this is just showing a way in which you can extract your middleware into its own module and then register or add that middleware in the main.py file to the app object by referencing that base HTTP middleware. Now let's check that this is still working. If we go back to the browser, and on the video upload page, I'm gonna refresh this and we see we get the same output. If we go back to VS Code, you can see that we're getting that same message output as a log. And that message is coming from the middleware, so everything is still working. But we've now managed to extract the middleware to its own file. And this file can then be used basically for the roots in the application. Now let's go back to the better stack live tail for these logs. And I'm gonna open this out here so we can see it better. This is one of the logs that we had. And it contains that message where we have, as the message, basically some JSON data. Or rather, I think this is the string version of that dictionary that we had. We have a URL pointing to whatever URL generated the output and also a method. But these are embedded within the dictionary. We might want to get these as top level keys, such as the file name or the level, so that we can then search for them, as in this example at the top here, where we search for all the logs that have a level equal to info. So how do we extract this key value structure here from the message and embed those keys at the top level so they become searchable? It turns out it's very easy to do this. Let's go back to middleware.py and when we output that log dictionary, what we can do is we can actually pass the dictionary in as a keyword argument called extra. So I'm gonna do that just now and save this file and go back to one of the pages and generate these log outputs using the middleware. If we then go back to better stack, let's go back to the live tail that we have on the left-hand side. 
and we're going to scroll right to the bottom here. And when we expand that log record, we see that we get the same message, but the keys and values within that log output have been extracted into top level keys and values, such as URL here, and we also have method of get here. So we can then search for that, for example, at the top method. And if we want to get only requests where the method is equal to get, we can search for that and it's going to return that single record because now method is a top level key. It's been indexed by Betterstack and we can now search over that content and we can see the output here. Now you can customize these records as you'd like. You could use JSON data and implement your own custom formatter class. But if you have simple keys and values that you want to appear in the top level and be searchable, you can simply pass a dictionary as the extra key to the logger.info, warn, error, and so on. These methods all accept this extra parameter and it allows you to pass in the custom data that you need. So let's finish this video by calculating the time it takes to generate a response for each of the endpoints in the application. And we're going to do this in the middleware. So within the middleware.py file, I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to import the time module that's built into Python's standard library. And then right at the top of the middleware function, I'm going to create a variable called start and I'm going to call the time.time .time method. That's going to give us back a timestamp at which this middleware is first invoked. And remember, this will happen for every request that comes into the application. So we have a start time. And then what we do is we call this next function and await the response. And that is going to give us back the response, but we want to calculate the time it takes in order to generate that response. So we can create another variable here just below the response, and that's going to be called process time. And again, we're going to call the time.time .time function here, and we're going to subtract the start time that we calculated at the start of this middleware function. And that's going to give us back a delta, and that delta represents the time it takes for this request to be processed and generate a response. Now the last thing I want to do is move these calls to logger.info down below the response here. So after we generate the process time, let's paste that code back in here. We create the log dictionary and this time I'm going to add another key to that and it's going to be called process time. And we're going to set that equal to the process time that we've calculated just above. So that gives us our log dictionary. We can then call logger.info and again we're outputting that dictionary as the message but we're also passing it to the extra key in order to make those keys in the dictionary top level keys on Betterstack. Let's now save this and go back to the page for the video upload. We're going to refresh this and you can see we get back the response. And if we do that on the main URL in the application, we also get back the response. We can go to the terminal and we can look at the process time for these. And you can see it's a very small number for that main URL and also for the video upload URL, also a very small number. Now what we're going to do is we're going to generate some artificial latency in one of these functions. Now when you upload a video that typically takes quite a long time. So what I'm going to do at the top is I'm going to import the Python async IO module. This is built into Python's standard library and that contains a function that you can use in an asynchronous endpoint. So within the upload videos endpoint let's await async IO dot sleep and we're going to sleep for 1.5 seconds. We can then go back to our endpoint here and I'm going to refresh this page and also go to upload videos here. And you can see that that takes a little bit more time to process that request and generate the response. And again, if we go back to the terminal here and look at the process time that's been calculated by our middleware, you can see that that is basically 1.5 seconds. Now what I'm going to do now just to end the video is go to Betterstack. So let's go over to Betterstack's UI here and go to the live tail. Now you might want to find the long running requests, the slow requests in your application. So let's now see how we can maybe do that now that we're logging out the process time on every single request. If we look at the record at the very bottom here, you can see the process time is now a top level key here and the value is the actual time taken to process that request. So we can then search the logs for a process time and you can see the suggestions here. Betterstack knows that that is a floating point number. We can then look for a processing time that's greater than one second and that would help us maybe diagnose very slow running requests in our application. So let's search for those and we get back two results and these are results for the upload videos endpoint after we introduce that asyncio.sleep call and you can see the process time is now 1.49 seconds. So we can use these search values and it doesn't need to be in a quality that we use. We can search for values that are greater than a number or less than a number or if it's a string, values that contain a substring. 
So there are lots of options here on Betterstack, and this is one example that you can use if you want to find slow running requests in a fast API application. And similarly, because we added the URL to the top level keys, what we can also do at the top is we can look at the URL and that's a string as it says here, but we can look for URLs that contain a particular string or are equal to a string. So let's look for all logs at the URL slash upload videos and that's gonna give us back all of those log outputs for that URL. And again, these have been generated by the middleware. So that's all for this video. In this video, we've shown how to generate a fast API application that contains a logger instance that sends your logs to different handler locations with a particular format. And we've seen how to add a handler for Betterstack and send our logs to the Betterstack platform where you can effectively analyze them and find interesting incidents and outputs that are occurring in your application. And in this video, we also saw how to create a fast API middleware function that performs some kind of logic on every request response cycle in your application. And then in this case, it's generating some log output and sending that log output to Betterstack where we have analyzed it and found an endpoint in our application that's running slower than we would expect. We can find that information and then respond to it accordingly. And that's vital when you're building applications. You need to know if something is performing slowly and then address that issue. So thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the Betterstack channel and please give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this content. If you have any suggestions for similar content, please let us know in the comments and we'll see you in a future video.